Nursing home employees are indicted for involuntary manslaughter. Push to end lockouts of certified nurse aid training gains bipartisan support, and a CCRC is ordered to pay $40,000 in back wages for shorting on overtime. This and more, next. You're watching LTC News with Dane Henning. Welcome to CNA TV Long-Term Care News. I'm Dane Henning. Today is Wednesday, February 27th, 2019. To stay in the know of Long-Term Care News, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Ohio Attorney General has indicted seven former Columbus nursing facility workers on dozens of charges following a patient's 2017 death from bed sores. Dave Yost announced charges last week against six employees and a contracted nurse practitioner at West Stone Gardens and Care Center. All told, the seven individuals have been hit with 34 charges, including involuntary manslaughter, with some stemming from alleged neglectful care of a second patient. The first patient developed serious wounds on his body in February 2017, which progressed to gangrenous and necrotic tissue. Despite his worsening condition, nurses allegedly failed to take steps to save his life, with the man dying a month later from septic shock. A jury last week indicted Sandra Blazer, Jessica Caldwell, and Kimberly Potter of involuntary manslaughter and gross patient neglect. In the second case, staffers allegedly documented treatments that were never provided to a different patient, who suffered from, quote, physical harm as a result of the inadequate care. Records for that patient contain false information and forged signatures, with some care occurring at times when the woman was not physically present at the facility. Five employees, including Blazer, were indicted on charges of forgery and or patient neglect. Nursing home lobbying group scored a victory last week with the introduction of a bipartisan bill to kill rigid provisions they say are handcuffing the industry's ability to improve staffing. Representative Sean Duffy, the Republican from Wisconsin, introduced legislation on Valentine's Day that would modify what's called the Certified Nursing Training Lockout, which has been in place since 1987. Existing laws state that nursing homes assessed civil monetary penalties above $10,000 on their annual survey lose their ability to train CNAs for two years. Industry trade groups for years have fought for the abolition of the provision. Duffy first introduced the bill in October, but it is now reintroducing it with bipartisan support, this time joined by Representative Colin Peterson, the Democrat from Minnesota. Under the proposal, the Secretary of the Department of Health and Human Services would impose lockouts based on substandard quality of care. Part of the problem skilled nursing facility advocates say is a suspension of CNA training is required even if the fines are not related to quality. Training can't be reinstated before the end of the two-year lockout, regardless of whether the issues raised by the citation have been fixed. We'll be back right after this break. Want a better way to invest in yourself as a CNA? And for only 10 cents per day, there's no better way to spend your daily dime. Start right here at knockacna.org. Click on membership, fill out a few boxes, submit, and you're in. With the National Association of Healthcare Assistants, you can begin your journey. With these great benefits that include 12 hours of education with the NACA Virtual Campus of Care. Our monthly newsletter, the NACA Edge, will come straight to your email with a special recognition to you. Registration discount to CNA Fest, NACA's annual CNA gathering just outside of Little Rock, Arkansas. 10% off anything in the NACA Pro Shop. CNA TV, our YouTube channel that focuses on topics, current events that pertain to what a CNA is all about, and much more. Start right here at knockacna.org. The Department of Labor is ordering a Pennsylvania provider to pay almost $40,000 in back wages and other damages after it allegedly shorted employees on overtime. After a recent investigation at Bethlehem Communities, officials said they found that the provider failed to include worker shift bonuses when it calculated overtime rates. The continuing care retirement community must now pay 92 of its employees a total of $39,704 for violating the Fair Labor Standards Act. 
Excluding bonuses resulted in Bethlen paying overtime rates that are lower than those required by law, the Department of Labor noted. The act requires that non-exempt employees be paid at least a minimum wage of $7.25 an hour, plus time and a half for work beyond 40 hours a week. Employers must also maintain accurate payroll records. This has been your long-term care news update. Everyone have a wonderful week, and I'll see you on Wednesday.